All right. So welcome everyone to BC314, our course on media and technology. Uh, let's take a moment to pray and then we will get started. Could somebody please pray for the class? We'll start. Go ahead, somebody. Shall I pray first? Yeah, please go ahead. Father God Almighty, we are thankful to you, Father, for everything that you provide us, Father. In this morning, as we come into your presence once again, Father, to learn about things that are important for us, Father, that would help us and, 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 and en en enrich us, Father, so that we can reach out to multitudes more than uh, we can think or imagine, Father, that you can accomplish much more than, Father, through media, through technology, and, Father, that we can glorify your name through everything that you have given in terms of wisdom and understanding and knowledge, Father. That's what our heart is, Father, that we would learn and give you glory, honor, and praise through what we are learning and use it to reach out to um, millions and millions of people through this technology. Father, as we are learning, give us the wisdom, the understanding, the, the zeal to learn and to use it and apply it. And Father, be blessed in it. Father, we thank you for Pastor and we thank you for all the students who are part of this uh, group, Father, and those who would be uh, learning and hearing it. In Jesus' name we ask and pray. Amen. 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 Thank you. All right. So uh, last week we had only one lecture. Uh, we spoke a uh, little about you know how we uh, some guidance on videos and graphics that we use, and so I put it out on the PDF. Um, don't worry if uh, you don't remember everything that that is there. Um, that's uh, so you have the PDF. So whenever you need it. Or whenever somebody in your, you know, ministry or church needs it, you know, you can always share the PDF with them and say, "Hey, here are some some useful tips." Um, and uh, uh, of course, things keep changing. You know, uh, keep things keep changing, so it's always uh, important to stay uh, stay current uh, with trends and how people are doing things. So today, um, we'll we'll talk a little bit about social media. And if we have time, we could get started with uh, digital equipment as well. I just want to kind of run through some, you know, uh, some things there on the digital equipment side, just to make us uh, be aware and familiar. So I'm going to go ahead and share the PDF that we have. Um, yeah. So I want to talk about today, we'll talk about social media. Uh, and of course, there are so many different platforms, and uh, yeah, some some of these some platforms they come and go, meaning they are there for a period of time and then they disappear. Right? That that used to happen, but now we are more or less kind of steady uh, with some major platforms like uh, yeah, we have Facebook, Twitter, uh, LinkedIn, Instagram, and then there are others who use a couple of other platforms. Uh, as well, uh, and so uh, the when when you're thinking about using social media, uh, a simple question to ask is, hey, uh, the people that you're planning to reach and engage with, now where are they? What are the platforms they are using? Now, it is highly likely that uh, these four major platforms, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, Instagram, uh, would be platforms where uh, people that you're reaching out to are al already there. Yeah, it's, it's highly likely. Uh, now, you, some of them uh, may be using, you may connect through on other platforms, but, but you know, these four are the most common ones. You'll find a lot of people there. So uh, just to get an idea, okay, and then you can decide, you know, okay, uh, uh, as a church or as a ministry, or uh, we're going to be uh, leveraging these social media platforms will use them. Of course, you know, I, I, I haven't added YouTube or those video channels. Uh, we covered them a little bit in, uh, when you talk about videos. But uh, you, know, you may want to use YouTube as another platform to uh, share your uh, information. Now, 
once you recognize that you know or decide that you know you're going to be engaging people on these platforms here are some tips uh, and these are all general tips that uh, we need to keep in mind as we put out content on social media uh, from of course we're talking from a church and a ministry perspective right uh, one is of course make sure you do regular posts um, if we do you know one a post once a month or you know once in two months or some you know uh, with, with long gaps it's not very engaging to people right they are uh, not likely going to be looking forward to your next post whatever you're doing right but if it's at a good frequency at a good regular interval uh, which you know in in the social media world it is at least once a week what would be better is a few times a week uh, depending on the platform you're using that will keep people connected and engaged right so the regular posts is important now, doing regular posts is not easy. It's not easy. For instance, I myself, I don't post. Right? I, I don't have time for it. And so I personally cannot, uh, you know, I don't make the time to do it. Now, some people, some may make the time to do it, and they may just, you know, they keep on posting whatever is happening in their life on their own Instagram account or whatever, wherever they, they post. Some people find it okay to do it. For me, I don't. I, I just don't have the time. So uh, I just have to depend on the people in the team to do it. But there is content available that's coming out every week, which we can post. I'm speaking from a church and a ministry perspective. Um, and, you know, of course, as individuals, you know, you can do as often as you want. But so as a church, we do have our sermons you know every sunday there's a sermon that's being preached so at least that can go out and then we do some other things like uh, we do a five minute summary of the sermon there's a video summary there's a video and audio summary so there may be people who may just want a quick review of the sermon they may not want to watch the entire or listen to the entire sermon so for them this five minute uh, piece is is attractive then then you know we have the shorts which are 60 seconds or less you know less than a minute uh, that's attractive to some people it's just one thought from the entire sum that's highlighted so that's you know um, um, that's a useful thing so you know you can actually get three posts out of one sermon you can do the full sermon you can do the five minute you can do a highlight you know so you've got at least three posts that can happen other things you can do you can announce the upcoming sunday sermon especially if it's on a topic that is very interesting to your audience if you announce it uh, it may get them to either come to the service or get them to connect online or you know or at least go to the sermon uh, the following week after it's been delivered so announcing an upcoming sermon could be a post uh, of course, when there are events that happen, they can announce them, testimonies, uh, pictures and videos of uh, things that are actually happening in the community, uh, church services, individual experiences, things like that. So that, that's, again, gets a lot of attention because people like to say, hey, this is what's going on uh, in our community or in that community. Uh, highlights of special events and so on. So if you can decide, okay, these are the things I'm going to, kinds of things we're going to post um, uh, you you will you will re realize that you can actually do regular frequent posts on social media now there is a lot more that can be done of course and um, there are churches who do an exceptionally good job um, with their social media posts they give people a beautiful a wonderful experience of you know what's happening in the service what's happening in the community uh you know and uh, uh, uh sometimes the pastors or the leaders they will post things from their own personal lives which gets a lot of attention now uh, somehow i can't do that so i i don't do it and so there's not much there's uh, almost zero <laughs> personal thing up there 
but you know some pastors and some preachers can do that and but that that gets a lot of attention because people like to know hey what's happening in their lives you know where are they what are they doing what are they eating <laughs> things like that so all, all kinds of posts so i'm just giving a generic list these are things which any church or ministry can actually post plus in addition to this there could be other things now the reason for regular posts is to keep people engaged right so they know that uh, and they will look look forward to hey, is there anything new right if they don't find regular posts then they just kind of fade away they stop coming back and stop looking out for things uh, and so on then another important thing is and these are just tips right uh, th there could be exceptions here and there but uh, try to have a consistent uh, presence across all platforms now you can think of it like this that uh, the, the the posts the posts that you think put out on social media are actually in some way conveying a personality of the church or the ministry like this is who we are this is our flavor this is you know this is how we work so it's conveying a personality of the ministry so uh, while while a personality can have different sides yet all of those sides come together they 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 they, they communicate a uniform a singular message this is who the person is while the person does have different sides to him or her so similarly when you're talking about a church or a ministry while well, definitely the church and the ministry has a lot of different things happening yet this is who the church is or the ministry is overall right so having a consistent look and feel across platforms is is important now uh, what does that what do we mean like uh, for instance uh, if one has a very classic look okay it looks like this and one is something really totally opposite to it in in terms of colors in terms of presentation people get confused it's like okay so what is this church really all about or what is this ministry really about is it this or is it that you know is it what i'm seeing on this platform is it what i'm seeing on that platform what what is this church really you know so kind of it could confuse people on your on the culture and the personality of the church right so i uh, try to keep and this is where you know what we talked uh, in one of our earlier classes about having guidelines for your graphics or your videos and everybody following that you know so there's a, some sort of a consistency a uniformed message that is uh, uh, got across to people across all platforms a third one is to encourage sharing uh, which is sharing is like the word of mouth of social media so you know uh, we understand word of mouth in our uh, human interactions you, know, you tell somebody hey uh, that restaurant is really good uh, then what is that person li most likely going to do they're going to go to that restaurant and they're going to try out that food there so what was that, that is a word of mouth influence in the social media space sharing something is equivalent to the word of mouth uh, on human interaction so when somebody shares on their own uh, timeline something that you know about your church and so on it kind of gets attention and it could I'm not saying always it does but it could direct people to come and uh, explore things for themselves so encourage that of course you don't want to force people you don't say you must do it or you know don't bang on their heads but just like what you know just a general thing hey if you like this why don't you share uh, and uh, pe some some people do it and most many times people they really like something they will they'll want to share it with, with their uh, circle of influence uh, another good thing to do on when you're in, doing, using social media is to use hashtags I think uh, many of you uh, maybe familiar with it so what what does the uh, uh, hashtag do it actually uh, it serves many purposes first of all it kind of gives a little it categorizes or it indicates 
particular topic that uh, that that content has to do with. So, uh, so when you say, you know, example, hashtag end times. Okay, then you're saying, okay, this is connected to end times or hashtag prophetic or hashtag healing. So you're saying, okay, this content is on that topic or in that category. And also makes it searchable because uh, that particular social media platform, whichever you're using, is going to use those tags to aggregate content and search based on that. And people will also, you know, who are interested in certain hashtags, they will be shown things that you've put out if they're interested in those topics and in those categories of topics. So. Uh, you can, uh, you know, you can put it out hashtag whenever in the bigger beginning, middle, or end of your media comment, and um, basically you're using uh, num uh, uh, characters uh, all in one line uh, without spaces and uh, hashtag some. So you know, uh, you could I'm just give an example here like that. So then, okay, this that means this content is from All People's Church, Bangalore. So people who like that, or who have been you know, looking into this, they will be most likely shown this content uh, and so on. So these hashtags are very important on uh, social media. That's how content is pushed. That's how content is found. Uh, and uh, then they actually may come to your uh, um, um, uh, to your channel uh, to look at what you're putting out. So uh, using hashtags intelligently uh, really helps make your channel visible or the content that you're putting out makes it visible. Right. So use it for all social media posts, whether it's a video or a graphic or a text, use it for everything. You know. And uh, uh, again, how many hashtags do you use? Well, generally you would use three to five, uh, that's optimal. Some people may do more, some may do less, but you don't, uh, uh, using numerous, I think beyond 15 makes it meaningless. Like it's it, the platform itself is not going to make use of that many tags. So they, they probably, you know, works with uh, maybe three to five or a little more than that. Uh, but just, you know, putting, Lots and lots of tags doesn't mean it's going to make your content that much visible. No, so use it judiciously. Uh, so, general guideline is use three to five tags. If you do seven or eight, that's okay. Uh, but that's what uh, is optimal for uh, tagging your content. Uh, where, where, uh, where useful? You could actually put it in your title. Uh, as, as part of your title, you can use that, and it will also make it increase visibility or discoverability if you would like to do that. And uh, so, try to, and I'm not saying you know we need to be always be using what's trending, but using what is trending helps give visibility, right? And uh, so use you try to look at you know what are the right keywords i must use you could use keyword planners like google has a keyword planner tool that's available uh, there are other hashtag keyword uh, search tools so try to use keywords that are relevant you know so example if um, if you're targeting christian community uh, okay if that message or the content is about healing and deliverance and okay use those relevant tags you know divine healing or healing and deliverance or hashtag supernatural or hashtag miracle service those are you know uh tags that are relevant to that community of course in relation also to the content you're putting out so um it can help in making your content visible to other people um Another thing about social media is, uh, you know, try and respond to questions or things that are expressed on your social me uh, media. 
Now, uh, uh, we we try, but uh, I don't think, you know, I'm talking about APC. And I don't think we are like very good in this, but, you know, because it does require time and effort and you need to have somebody doing it. But wherever possible, you know, when people ask a question or try to respond, uh, uh, ask a question or make a comment uh, that requires a response, then of course, it's it's good that somebody's watching and will respond to those uh, questions on on your social media platforms. Uh, sometimes you know the comments are just generic. You don't have to respond to every comment, but where they're asking for some information, it's good to show that you respond um, because other people are watching what the interaction that's happening, and they see that okay, this church is responding so on. So we do uh, for our Sunday services, for example, uh, when our Sunday services are live, we do have designated mo uh, moderators, uh, like people who are there at that time. So if there's a question or some some comment, there are people who can respond to that. You know, so when the service is live on YouTube, on Facebook, uh, Instagram, uh, I. I or Facebook and uh, I think even on Twitter. So there are people, we have people moderating it. So when there are comments or questions, they're able to respond. Uh, so we try to that extent, um, be a little prompt in responding to these comments. Um, some other, t uh, other tips, um, you know, you, you try to determine what is the best time to post. Um, that is, the time when most of your people, it depends of course on your audience, but when are they most likely for, the, they are going to be on social media, on their accounts, you know, just browsing their phone or doing something. So that would be the best time to release content and so that you can have higher engagement. And then after that, you know, the curve starts coming down. Um, if it's not, you know, if there are not that many views and so on. But if there are views, then of course it, it picks up, it kind of rides the wave. So uh, depending on the, your audience and when they are uh, using social media, uh, you try to time your um, uh, post so that as soon as you post, you do, you are getting reactions. Uh, uh, to your post, and that kind of keeps moving the post up further. So you can look at uh, Facebook Insights, for example, to uh, get an idea of when people are uh, online, people who are following your uh, Facebook page. When are people online? And it tells you, okay, here's, here's generally when most of your people are active. So therefore you can then time your post on that day or that time, that hour of the day or that day of the week. And so, okay, you know, most important posts are gonna come out then. Uh, now you'll, you'll see a distribution. Now typically people say, okay, Thursdays are when people, a lot of people are active for whatever reason. Uh, so if, if that's what you find, uh, then it's okay. I'm gonna release my most important content on that day, at that time. Other things will keep coming through, of course, on other days, uh, but that might be a good time to release very important content, okay? But you can get insight on how people are interacting, uh, your audience is engaging from looking at uh, Facebook insights. Um, other things that you can consider doing is to do paid promotions and advertising on social media platforms. So that's how many of these platforms make their money, uh, through paid promotions and advertising. Uh, so if you want to, you could also promote your event uh, through paid promotions, uh, running ads on these platforms. Um, it definitely gives visibility. It doesn't it definitely is, uh, you know, comparatively, it's very economical. So if you compare that with, you know, printing, actual handbills and trying to get those handbills or flyers, printed flyers out to people, there's a cost involved in printing all of that, in packaging all of them, 
or in distributing all of them, however you're planning to distribute. Whereas uh, social media platforms are a very good alternative. Uh, several advantages, they are very cost effective. And second, you are coming in front of people uh, in a non-intrusive manner. It's like, okay, if they don't want, they just scroll past. It's not, uh, you're not being too in your face or thing. Uh, whereas, you know, a handbill, you, you might, if you're distributing handbills uh, on, on a street corner or, or you're having to mail it to people's homes, you know, things like that. It's like, okay, in some way, it could be intrusive if you are standing and distributing flyers. Whereas the social media, the, the graphics or the video just comes in in their feed. If they want to, they can see it. Otherwise, they just scroll past it or skip it. So, uh, and it also gives you access to lots of people. You can cover huge ground, multiple cities, cover an entire country or multiple countries or globally. You can target your uh, uh, promotions. You can target by uh, interests. You can target by other demographic factors. So doing all of this uh, is, is very useful. Uh, maybe just to keep us all awake, let me see if I can. Uh, everyone's with me so far? OK. Let me just see if I can log into our Facebook account just to show you some ads we run. Uh, it's been a while since I went there. I oh, hope it doesn't tell me to log in. OK, got to log in. Enter the code. Let me see. Just give me a minute. Enter code. OK, one minute. Okay, we are in. I'm sorry, it's been a while since I kind of came in here. Um, but I think I would remember what, what is doing. So you see these posts are happening. Now, a lot of this is automated. So, um, you know, these posts, have, these are our daily devotional posts. And I think they should have some tags. Okay, so they're giving some links. And then we have these standard tags. Uh, all of you can see what I'm, oh. Uh, I, I'm not sharing it, am I? Can you see what I'm showing? No, sir. Oh, okay. Okay, okay, okay. Sorry, I'm really sorry. I forgot to share my screen. Share. Okay. Anyway, so I just logged into. Now you should be able to see. Yes, yep. perfect. Okay. <coughs> sorry. So I just logged into our uh, APC Facebook account. It's been a while, so uh, I might be a little uh, rusty in this. But anyway, so uh, so these posts happen automatically every day. These are daily devotionals. And I was just showing you, you know, th these are tags. And all of these are pre -con all uh, set up earlier in advance. So it just gets pushed out to Facebook every day. And then, you know, our sermons come in, all of that. But uh, what I want to want to show you is the ads. So again, it's been a while, but let me go here. Ad center, yeah, in the ad center. Okay. So you see, uh, we've uh, let's see, we've run this ad, uh, which was we were promoting our uh, New Year's Day service. Um, uh, this ad, we we spent just seven thousand rupees, uh, but it reached a hundred and eighty. 3,000 people. Uh, so it, it had a good reach. And I, I, if I recall correctly, we were just targeting people in our city. So it was just going here, just inviting them to the New Year's service. And uh, there were about 7,800 clicks. That means people actually clicked on the ad. And uh, you know, then they uh, 
they came to the website and so on. And then you can see you know, how people are engaging with the ad. You can get some information, which age groups were engaging. Uh, you know, so you, you see a lot from the 25 to 34, male, female, and uh, locations. Of course, this was all uh, primarily within our, our own city is what we were targeting. But then there were others from other cities. Um, yeah, so uh, notice we were running this within Bangalore, 30 miles, and also Mangalore, 25 miles. So we were targeting two cities, Bangalore and Mangalore, uh, with this ad. So just a quick uh, you know, uh, look at that in terms of you, know, you can run the ad. Uh, there's an ads manager. So you can promote. So this was website. So think about this ad. This is a, for a Bible college. We ran this ad. It reached 4.8 million people. Uh, we had 36,000 clicks. Um, uh, we just spent 20,000 rupees. That's it. So for just 20,000 rupees, we had such a big reach. And this is global. So it was running everywhere. You know, where are people on Facebook, English? Uh, they, they would be presented with this ad uh, for our Bible college. So uh, just doing this, uh, of course, this was run, I think. Um, can look at the results. Um, look at the cost. The cost is just 55 paisa per click, right? So it's very cheap. Uh, and for you, for us to get this kind of reach and this kind of engagement is actually very cheap. Um, if you look at some, some just some information here, demographics, you can see a lot of people in this age, age group, 24 to 34, were people who uh, you know, interacted with this ad. Uh, of course, it can go, it was placed on different, um, um, you see a lot of mobile app interaction. Um, and this is, of course, locations be around the, around the world. Um, it may take some time, I think, because this will give you a list of all the cities where. Um, so, and that might take some time. All right. So, just to give a quick idea that you know you can set up this ad, you can boost your post, and uh, really reach a lot of people. Uh, similarly. You know, we could, I could show you how we run ads on YouTube uh, where you can create a short video and uh, uh, promote uh, the, the uh, uh, promote the video on YouTube, like a five sec uh, 30 second YouTube video. Uh, you can set it up, you can actually target your audience. You can say which countries uh, and you can say which language or which languages. Uh, you can say which age group, you can say uh, which platform, I mean, which devices, you know, uh, laptops or uh, tablets or mobile devices or TV screens. So you can target the, you know, how you want to, where you want to push the ad. So, and then you run it. Now, YouTube is a little bit more expensive, but uh, uh, it's a video ad and really it gets, so you've got audio video. So, really gets people's attention when you run the ad. Um, I, uh, yeah, I mean, if, I don't know if I, uh, yeah, um, I'm just thinking whether I will be, I will be able to log in. It might log me out of, uh, It's okay. All right. Anyway, um, I just think if I log in there, it might log me out of Google because it's a um, Google uh, account. Anyway, so uh, thinking, making use of social media ads uh, is a good way to reach people these days, right? In contrast to uh, distributing flyers and so on. It's it's amazing that you know, like we can be sitting here in Bangalore. And we can be running an ad on Facebook that is reaching every country on the earth, except in you know, certain countries like, say, maybe Russia and China and um, North Korea and some other countries where you know uh, the the platform is not being used. But generally, otherwise, you can cover many, many 
globally basically you can reach just by pushing an ad on this platform and it's not expensive at all all right let me just finish up the a uh, few thoughts other thoughts here on social media um, so paid promotions last two points uh, we can measure results measure the outcomes so like i was showing you uh, uh, you can when you run an ad you can see what are the outcomes plus generally how is your facebook page doing you can monitor you know facebook has an insights uh, section where you can go and look at how your facebook is your page is doing or youtube similarly has information on you know um, who watched the video which country were they from demographics those kind of things so if you know how many minutes do they watch uh, or if you're doing a live stream, when was the peak uh, number of viewers, uh, live viewers, all that information these platforms provide, which is very useful if you're trying to analyze how you are doing uh, on these social media platforms. So many of these platforms give that kind of information. Uh, you can look, go look at it. You can tell your team members, uh, say, hey, look at it, see how we're doing, see how, what, what can we do to improve. In addition to these analytics that's already provided with the platforms, you can also use third-party tools to monitor and to listen to what's happening. So if you go, if you use, if you go to this link, um, um, I think this is pretty useful. Let me just pop, go over there just to show you. Um, So I've just gone to that last link on um, that I gave you in the PDF. So this is a, is a useful article. It shows you, you know, what are the tools available for social media monitoring. That is what is happening on your website. Oh, sorry, on your particular social media channel that we're using, uh, uh, and how, what, 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 what is the mood of people responding to you? You know, are they angry? Are they supportive? Are they encouraging, etc.? How are the hashtags etc. doing? Um, and it also tells you, you know, uh, it also listens, meaning uh, kind of gives you some insight on in how uh, how your or the trend on your uh, particular platform. What can you look forward to? Some predictive things that are predictive in nature. So uh, using these tools will give you this kind of information. Then on this link, uh, if you go down. Uh, there are some other useful articles there on, let's see, on um, here, on what tags you can use, uh, templates that you could use, best time to post. Uh, so, you know, you've got all these uh, useful articles that you could look up and uh, you can get some information. So I just wanted to point you that, you know, the information is available on these things. And if you can take some time to... Uh, just explore. That will be useful. Whoops. Got to get rid of this. Okay. All right. Uh, any questions on that so far? On social media? Okay. Just give us a little bit of idea. I'm going to just introduce our next chapter, and then we will continue this tomorrow. In our next chapter, I want to just spend some time uh, uh, talking about digital equipment. Right? So uh, when we talk about digital equipment, we're going to talk about, uh, just give a little idea about cameras, about audio equipment, video equipment, and live streaming equipment. Um, now, this is not a technical, it's not going to be a very technical uh, lesson, but the intent is for you and me to have some idea. So when people, when your team members come and talk to you, or, um, you know, we want to buy a camera, or we want to buy, you know, we want to buy some audio equipment, or we want to buy some equipment for live streaming, uh, at least you have some idea that, okay, this is how it happens. 
Now, um, you know, th there are so many variations out there, there so many different kinds of cameras, so many different kinds of uh, audio configurations or live streaming configurations. Uh, lo lots of different variations out there. Uh, lots of different ways to make things happen. But uh, the goal in this lesson on digital equipment is just to kind of give us an idea, like, this is what's there. At least know these, be aware, so that when people come to you, and especially if, if you're, you are going to be one of the decision makers, um, the, the important thing is for you to ask, to be able to ask the right questions, you know, uh, to make the decision. Example, if you are the pastor of a church, uh, sure, the, the, the team members there who are handling the video production or the audio, uh, they'll be handling it, but usually, the decision or for approval to buy something, to buy an equipment, to buy something that they want comes to you, right? So they will say, hey, we need to buy this. Uh, now, uh, one way to do it is just to trust them and sign it off, or other ways to ask questions. For example, just yesterday, you know, uh, I received a request from our audio engineer. They wanted to buy a mixer for one of our church locations. So they send this thing in. So, OK, now I have to approve it. Uh, but then I look at it, and then my immediate question is, do we need to buy this? So they had requested for a 20-channel mixer. My question was, do you need a 20-channel mixer? We already have a six-channel uh, mixer. You know, why do you need a 20-channel? Can't we do it something less? So how many, how many inputs are coming in right now? uh you know so on so forth now their reasoning would be oh we are preparing for the future well you know you know what is the you know do you want to jump to a 20 channel or can you just can we do enough for the 16 channel so finally so because i asked the question everything changed and the price came down by 50 percent and we settled for a different mixer which was just 16 channels um so yeah, 16 channels, 16 or whatever it was. Okay. But anyway, uh, um, so the point is this, right? They are doing their work. They come to you for approval. You need to have at least some amount of information to ask the right questions. You don't have to have know everything about the te technology, but just some information. Okay, let's ask the right questions. Do we really need this? Or how about this? Uh, uh, and so on, you know? Um, so uh, I'm sharing that. Uh, I'm sharing the next lesson it's on digital equipment from that perspective, uh, just to give us sufficient information uh, on various aspects of what will usually be involved in uh, audio video production for a typical church or Christian ministry, so that you understand what is happening and you are able to, you know, uh, answer questions or be make informed decisions and a lot of this thing these things even i didn't know for instance a long time ago somebody came and said uh you know we need to buy a snake cable <laughs> i'd never heard of something like that you know what do you mean we need to buy a snake cable you know and then they had to explain to me what a snake cable was and then i understood what why we need to buy that you know and then that's our, so there's a learning process to all of this. Uh, but, uh, you know, I just wanted to share the information that we have so far. And, uh, you know, uh, it'll help you in your making decisions for your ministry. Okay. So we'll get into this chapter tomorrow. Um, digital equipment, just run through things. Uh, and then we kind of becoming close to completion of the course. After we do digital equipment, uh, we will run through software platforms, things that you can use for your church and ministry, uh, right? Okay, any questions so far? All right, let's close in prayer. Uh, just request somebody to close, we'll pick this up tomorrow. So we can pray and dismiss us. Dear God, we thank you so much for everything that you did, God. We thank you, Lord, for the time in the classroom. You've always done something wonderful and beautiful. 
that we may always grow up to know that there's you in everywhere, God, that you are the creator of everything, and you have given the individuals mankind, that Jesus, and everything we do, you be the first and center of our lives. Thank you, God, for this. Um, as we learn about social technology, God, thank you so much, Lord, that we not just um, hear it, but also, Lord, that you have something for us to do with it, to share your good news to us. Yes, God. Thank you, Lord, for everything. I pray for my classmates, God, as they're about to go, Lord, that they will see the goodness and the mercy that you have in the world. And I also pray your blessing with us, Ashish, and also, Lord, thank you, Lord, for bringing you into our lives, God. Thank you so much, Lord, for everything that you do. Thank you, everyone. Um, see you all tomorrow. God bless. Enjoy the rest of your day. Bye now. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor. God bless. Bye now. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you.